Hello everyone, Rekabilly here. Today what I have for you is an option selector. Much like a bubble list when you're selecting bubbles instead of check marks, you can only choose one at a time. So we have four options here for example, and right now I want to choose option two. So I choose option two and as you can see, option four gets removed. Um, if I choose option one, option two gets removed, option three, option one gets removed and you can go in any order any order you want um, you can almost go as fast as you want to but if you go a little bit too fast then this can actually mess up um, but yeah it's a pretty simple creation well it's simple in thought <laughs> this is basically what you need for it to work um, and I'm gonna do a, a little tutorial this is gonna be my one of the first times that I try to do a tutorial um, but it should be pretty interesting. Okay, let's get started. So for every button or every selection, you're gonna need these blocks right here. And it's tileable, so you can get as many as you want going side by side um, with a, a certain limit. But um, okay, the first thing that you wanna do here is make sure that the button, when you press it, keeps the light staying on. So we're gonna put a block here and a redstone dust. Yeah, redstone dust here with a sticky piston here and a block on top. Another block next to this with a repeater pulling the power from there. You're gonna put two blocks out here with redstone dust on top. And we can put one down here. We're gonna actually get back to this part later, but we're gonna need it right now just to build. So we put a block right here, a half slab here. We can leave that block there for now or break it, it doesn't matter. Block here and a half slab here and redstone dust on top of the half slabs. Now this block is actually gonna be changed into a piston with a redstone block to go right here. Now this acts as a one tick pulse, which actually will leave the piston behind or leave the redstone block behind, which makes this power. So that's it. That's how you make the button turn on and off the light with one press. Pretty simple, I like it. And uh, if that's all you need, then that's where you can stop. But what we want to do is make sure that it actually uh, resets all of them when we have the one side by side. So what we do is put a repeater here and we're going to extend this signal out this way with two more redstone dust. We're going to put another one tick pulse here, but this time we're going to play sand because I've noticed if we put a wool block there, it kind of freaks out. So. Um, we're going to do the repeater, take this out again, another sticky piston with a block on top, which um, which is basically going to do the same thing that the redstone block does. It goes out when it is turned on, and it pulls back when it is turned off. So now we need to power it from the other side, so we're going to place down the redstone here, and we're going to take two more blocks out this way with redstone dust on top and a repeater going this way. Now we're going to place a block and start pillaring up. That's all we need. Redstone dust here, put a block on top of there. And we can actually pull this out with, we need one more. One more half slab, redstone dust on there, block here, and this block needs to be moved here. So now we just need to send the signal back around and it's going to basically do the exact same thing that it did before, but in an awkward way. Um, paste the, place the repeater there with a block on top, block here, and a redstone dust on those two blocks. And we need a block here, one block on top, and this part's a little confusing. Um, basically, we need to power one of these blocks in order to make everything run again. Um, kind of hard to explain, but we kind of get this shape going. Well, actually to think about it, you, you can actually just take away this block here and make it straight and it'll work just the same way, but because I already did the example before, I think I'll just leave it. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it. No biggie. But what we need to do is power the redstone line below to redo the piston, so we place a repeater here and a block here 
redstone dust on top of that block. And now we power the piston below here. So this resets both pistons. Pretty simple, and that's everything they need for one of these buttons. Um, to get an output signal like I have here, all I do is, let's just place a temporary block here, put a piston on top, and I put two slime blocks and a redstone block on top of that with a, uh, an obsidian block or an immovable object block right here that we can place redstone on, like so. Um, you don't necessarily need to do that, but it's something that I thought would be easy to use. So that is basically all you need for this. Yes, it does work with button or wooden buttons and stone buttons. Um, and the output signal, uh, the only reason why I did this is because it's kind of easier to pull a redstone block output signal when it's not so close to redstone dust. So I put the two sticky pistons and put the block up here. Um, thought that would be easier to pull out from. And this could be for anything guys, it can be for level selectors, it can be for specific doors, you can set your minecarts to send you in different directions based on which option you choose. Um, if you want to add more than I think 5 or 6 of these side by side, you're going to need a two-way repeater, uh, which I will do another video on very soon on how to do two two-way repeaters. Um, that I know how to do and maybe a couple more if I can figure some out but that is gonna be it for this episode or this video please leave a like if you enjoyed the video if you have any suggestions for my uh, for my tutorial attempt that you just witnessed cuz I don't know it wasn't that bad was it It wasn't that bad uh, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments below and I will see you all in the next one take care Today I have three unique and interesting ways of entering doors in Survival Minecraft. Let's check it out. This first one here is quite simple and it's it's been done before I'm sure in Minecraft. This is basically based off of the game that you can find on the app stores where you have a ball, you tilt the device left and right to kind of guide the ball through the holes and you last as long as you can until the game is over.